Today's project is a western plow pump rebuild. This one's off an older conventional pro plow. What happened was there was some water in the valving of this one. Even repeatedly changing the fluid didn't get it all out of there. So I decided just to take it all the way down and put all new seals in it. Upon disassembly I found some bad threads and I had another casting so I'll be using that one. Here's the casting I'm going to be using. It's all cleaned up. It was wire wheeled except for all the uh, gasket surfaces and then it was cleaned with soap and water and brushes. Brushes were run through all the ports in it. Every single plug was removed to get it as clean as possible. I do have the bottom of it taped right now because there is a sealing surface there. I'm not bothering showing any of the disassembly because it's basically the reverse of the assembly. Before I go any farther I'm going to say that I've never done this before so anything I say could be wrong and this is basically just a video of what I'm doing to my pump. Really not a how-to video. In the casting here is a cross-drilled passage that goes all the way through it. In the passage is a shuttle valve and a lift valve is what they're calling it. And I believe as this comes away it releases the fluid back into the reservoir lowering the plow. Shuttle valve going in. The cable control hooks up to this cam operated device which moves the shuttle valve. The cam lobe seats in the shuttle valve. Here I have what they're calling the lift valve. It has a couple o-rings on it. Put a little Vaseline on those o-rings and that'll go in here. And this is an adjustment piece. The instructions call for some anti-seize on these threads and a lot of other threads. But I really had a hard time getting the other pump apart. I may or may not put it on some of the threads. Before I put the cam in, I'm going to clean it up and replace the uh, o-rings on it. Not really sure that it matters too much, but I'm going to put my eccentric towards the back and adjust the lift valve accordingly. It doesn't work, I'll have to flip it around and then put it towards the front side. Torque to spec. And everything else will be torque to spec also. I've adjusted my lift valve so this arm travels and stops right about there. Here I'm getting ready to install the check valve. Inside there is a uh, spring loaded ball, and the instructions are saying there should be two to three threads showing after the jam nut. So I'll screw it in as such. There's what they're calling an expansion plug in this casting, and I didn't bother removing that. The passage back to the reservoir was clear. There is a threaded plug that will be installed here to cap off this oil passage. I just have a dab of Teflon paste on it. Here's the four-way valve block. I ended up taking that all apart and cleaning it. There are two cushioning valves that go into the ends as so. A couple plugs go into the end of it. Got a couple new o-rings on it and with the gasket I'm going to go ahead and screw it on the body. Torque at the spec. I'm getting ready to put the rest of the valving together here. And I'm going to have to wing it because I don't really have good instructions on this. But there's like a rotary valve in here with an o ring, so that'll be replaced. They gave me these three gaskets, or maybe two. I'm going to put the silver one between these two pieces and this tan one between the end piece and the block. Then crank it all down to spec. This is one of the points where it was leaking before we took it apart. Here she is installed. There's a chance that I might have to flip this valve 180. Not sure, it might work both ways, but you can see it does move and it feels fairly tight in there, so I think I'm going to be good. There's a spring and a screw that hold that arm on, and inside here is a pin. So I'm going to attempt to put all that together. There are a couple nicks in the ram, so I got a new ram for the head, and I'm getting ready to install the packing set. And I'm Pretty much going to do it just like the old one here. Those packings sit on the top side of this 
tube. Here I'm getting ready to insert it. I've lubricated all the packings with the hydraulic oil that I'm going to be using. I'm just going to try to work these packings in one at a time past these threads. I have a blunt screwdriver here, I'm trying to work them down. Here's my nut and the wiper seal. Comes right out of there. The kit came with a new one. I'll wire wheel this down. I'll probably put a little grease on these threads. I have some hydraulic fluid on the wiper seal and see if we can get this nut started. The packing nuts torque to spec now and I'm getting ready to install the pump. Kit came with a new o-ring for the bottom and I have a new filter. This looks like a push-on style filter unlike that other pump over there which is a screw-on. I actually have a video out on changing a plow pump filter and that was the screw-on type. This push-on one might be easier. I don't know if you'd have to take the pump out of the case or not for that. Good shot of putting this filter on here. Pretty tight fit. Oh. I think one would have a pretty tough time putting that filter on a pump inside the case. I'm going to go ahead and stick the pump in the case now with the o-ring over the feed hole. So here's the motor. We got a new gasket for that to the reservoir and there's a seal in here. The kit came with one of those. Driving a screwdriver underneath it got it up pretty easy. There's a taper on this seal so it looks like it was in there the right direction. Try to put the new one in the same way. I'm putting a little bit of uh, hydraulic lube on that shaft before sawing the motor. Here I'm getting ready to put the base lug on. There's a new o-ring in here and I found that all the crap accumulates down here like sludge and moisture along with uh, this area. So a tip might be that to clean that area out every other year or something like that. There's a couple more plugs that go in the bottom, can't forget those. We're going to wipe it down with some acetone, primer and paint it. And next time you'll see it, it'll be on the truck. Here she is on the truck. The red paint I had was really old and it didn't work out. It's snowing outside, so the paint job is going to have to wait until another day. But I'm going to operate it here and see if she works. We've checked it for leaks, no leaks. It might need some fine tuning adjustments on it once the plow is on it. Pretty late tonight, I'm going to wrap this video up. Thanks for watching.